Okay, Timothy Brown, CEO of Roy Corporation, once again with Marietta Bracey of NBCLegal.ca. Marietta, uh, in, in the course of selling practices, of course, we have many listings on the market today and many more to come in the future where the seller, the present owner, is not likely to invest in uh, proper written employment contracts. And we strongly advise that you consider doing this before bringing your practice to market. Two to three years in advance is ideal. Um, and you can even do it two to three months if need be, but two to three years in advance is ideal. However, we know from statistics that some owners will not do this. So once this transaction closes, be it a brokered sale or a private sale, the buyer will have some legacy costs related to the employees that were with the business at the time of sale that are likely to stay with the business post-sale or post-closing. Mariana, what is your advice to a purchaser who's bought a practice where proper written employment contracts are in place in terms of when should they introduce them and how long should they wait? Uh, we do get that question very, very often, Tim, and generally speaking, when a potential purchaser calls us to say, what do I need to know? Mm -hmm. I'm shopping for a practice. We right. tell them, in an ideal world, you buy a practice with a, a practice protection package in place, proper written contracts and policies specialized for that practice. Uh, but if you haven't been able to do that, and if, if, you, if you can identify such a practice, mm -hmm. uh, that is worth more to you than the same practice without, without the PPP. Right. Uh, but so you've, you've purchased one that doesn't have that. We generally advise them, statistically, it's for two reasons. It's better to do it as soon after closing as possible. For one thing, the contingent liabilities are there until such time as you do transition a proper written contract. So right. the sooner you do that, the sooner you close out those very Even a week or two after buying a practice, is that soon? Yes, well we, we need uh, time to prepare oh. in advance in order to do the rollout. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, we do advise that we do the rollout within a week or two of closing for those very significant legal reasons. But also what we find um, in, in uh, in our sort of statistical daily experience is that the staff react much better the sooner post-closing it is. They, they seem to perceive it as almost a kind of security blanket if the new purchaser is offering them a contract. The longer you wait post-closing, the more a sort of uh, entitlement sense kind of creeps in and then they, to the extent that there's any resistance, there will be more resistance the longer you wait. So the sooner post-closing you do it, the, 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 the smoother the process generally seems to be. So most buyers would know that they're buying a practice uh, and they will have gone firm or waived all their conditions usually four, six, eight weeks before the actual closing date transpires. Yes. So they can start preparing two to three months before the closing date Excellent. such that these proper written employment contracts could be delivered to the team within one to two weeks or even on the first date perhaps of new ownership. Yes. And I like your point that it's a security blanket for the staff because in many cases proper written employment contracts actually give the employee more security and it documents whatever their uh, years of service and their seniority and their benefits is. Right. Well very often the staff are concerned when a new buyer comes right. in you know how many of the staff will the buyer keep uh -huh. and so they see it as a positive that they were in fact offered a contract. Another thing that we often talk about when a when a buyer is contacting us for you know how to protect their their uh, employment law interests right. is they're very often concerned in negotiating in the agreement of purchase and sale the indemnity post closing. Right. So there's a lot of discussion about how long should the indemnity um, subsist between the vendor and the purchaser for termination uh, costs related to the employees. And what I like to tell my clients is. It's, it's really focusing on the wrong issue if you get too obsessed with the indemnity because that's really a suboptimal way to protect your interests anyway. Right. And if you have proper contracts, in a way you don't really care about the indemnity. So, uh, you know, every, you, you need to obviously get specific legal advice about your transaction, but uh, one of the huge advantages of having a practice protection package is you, you are in a position of luxury where you, you're not going to have to have extensive negotiations about the indemnity clause because it really doesn't matter to you.
Well, or right. matters dramatically less. Absolutely, and I can tell you that sellers do not like the post-sale indemnity clauses. It's like having a golden pair of handcuffs and the chain is not cut until three months or six months or nine months post-sale. Right. And the seller is worried about staying at, at home or in retirement, waiting for the phone to ring to say, oh, the buyer can't work it out, the staff have to be released and there's additional costs. So I think what we've covered in this particular video, which is one of our longer ones, but it's a very important one, um, buyers need to get at this either before they close on the transaction, once they know they have a particular practice tied up, or very, very soon thereafter, and not to live in fear, and not to lay awake at night worrying about staff, because staff are here, and they're necessary, and they're part of every business that I've ever seen, and they're very important. But we need to manage these risks, and understand them, and get on it sooner rather than later. Very much so. I'm Timothy Brown with Mariana Bracing of NBCLegal.ca. Thanks for watching.